Okay, in this presentation we're going to look at archetypes. Archetypes are important to understand because we will be encountering archetypes in the Doctor Who series. An archetype is a universal theme. Um, it is an easy way for us to automatically assume certain things about a particular character, a particular um, setting based on what we know what patterns we know that it will follow. So within the different characters we have several different archetypes. We have the hero, the villain, the martyr, the sage, the child, the trickster, damsel in distress, star-crossed lovers. So if we see um, a particular, uh, well for example, we know what the villain is going to be. We know what the villain's story has to be. So as soon as we see someone identified as a villain, we know a little bit more about them. If we know that the person is the damsel in distress, then we know, for example, that she is going to find herself in trouble. She's going to have some um, handsome young man come and save her. They'll fall in love and live happily ever after. Star-crossed lovers, for example, if we know that they're fitting this pattern, we're going to have two people who are kept apart for some reason. They find some way to be together, but then they're parted again. Um, and then sometimes they may reach a happy ending, and it would be a comedy. Sometimes they would not, and it would be a tragedy. Just to walk through some different aspects of these, um, we have the hero. Perhaps the most universal the hero is a construction built to illustrate a deep psychological aspect of human existence. It's a search for self-knowledge. Notice that the hero usually has circumstance, unusual circumstances surrounding his birth, is forced to leave home and live among others, has traumatic events that lead him to a quest, wields a special weapon, has supernatural help. So for example we can see certain people who automatically fit into we think of hero, um, Harry Potter, born in unusual circumstance. His um, parents were fighting a great evil wizard and his mother sacrificed herself for him which transferred love upon him. Um, Jesus, born um, to a virgin in a stable. So we can see that as soon as we have a hero it's going to fit a certain pattern. And I'm going to skip through the video. Um, the anti-hero is characterized by his lack of heroic qualities such as courage or morality and possession of those associated with the villain. This character is corrupt, oppressive, and is generally unglamorous. So in other words, it's not a villain. For example, Robin Hood. He's not a villain. He's doing good, but he's doing things that we would normally consider what a villain does. You know, normally the hero doesn't lie, cheat, and steal exactly what Robin Hood does. It's the outcome that turns him into a hero, but because of the way he acts is not heroic, we say that he's an anti-hero. And these are some other examples of anti-heroes. The tragic hero is a protagonist of a tragedy. The tragic hero is one who is flawed, evokes feelings of pity, sympathy, compassion, and empathy. You feel for him. Some examples are Batman, Superman, Oedipus, Hamlet, Boromir, Lord of the Rings. So different um, heroes that not only are they heroic people, but because there's something so flawed about them, there's something that just makes you feel for them so much more than you do for um, just a, a typical hero. Then with the villain, usually the evil character has a negative effect on others. Notice the characteristics powerful, intelligent, wounded, immoral, determined. So these are important aspects of the villain. The martyr is the one who is persecuted. I have a dream! So examples besides Martin Luther King, we have Jesus, we have Joan of Arc, Frodo Baggins, Harry Potter. Um, and so these are very much the martyr. The sage is a wise man, a wise woman. 
It's a source of profound philosophical insight, usually guiding the hero. Some examples, Gandalf, Dumbledore, Merlin, Yoda, Mr. Miyagi. Um, so these are the people that the hero goes to for guidance. The child is something that's present in all humans. It's considered a survival archetype. Um, it's characterized by childish to childlike longing for the innocent, for the innocence, regardless of age. So some examples would be a wounded child, the orphan child, the dependent child, innocent, eternal divine nature. Hello, my name's Forrest, Forrest Gump. Would you like a chocolate? Oh, thank you. It's funny what a young man... And so again with Forrest Gump, we see the childlike aspect, even in the adult. So it's that aspect that's wanting to get us back to innocence. The trickster is one who delights in practical jokes, um, not physically intimidating, uses psychological warfare, generally nonviolent. So some examples, um, the Joker, Bart Simpson. Some tricksters um, are known as trickster villains as they employ violent and often deadly means to attain their goals. Um, others are just practical jokers. Damsel in distress. This is the oldest, um, sorry, let me take that back one. The oldest female archetype, the damsel in distress, is always beautiful, vulnerable, in need of rescue. Um, and so one example, Princess Zelda, um, Bella Swan, Lois Lane, Cinderella, Snow White. Again, damsels, a, a woman who for some reason finds herself in a situation where she needs to be rescued. And so it's usually the hero who comes to her rescue. Star-crossed lovers are those who are deeply in love but whose relationship is impeded by outside forces. Yeah. Um, Romeo and Juliet is by far um, the most common. And so, again, I've walked you through very quickly, I know, some of these different archetypes. So we have the hero. We have the different aspects of the hero. It can be a tragic hero or an anti-hero. We have the martyr. We have the sage, the wise person, the villain, the trickster, the damsel in distress, the star-crossed lovers. And so as we go through the course, we're going to be looking at each of the characters, the doctor in his different forms, as well as some of the companions. Which of these archetypes do they fit, do they represent?